Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Many of you will remember Phil the Mall. Remember that? Let's click on it here. Phil them all is what we came up with, didn't we? Catch them all, which is, of course, the tagline to Pokemon. Poke the man, Pokemon. So many of you will remember this three hour stream that we did. This isn't the stream here, but we did like a three hour live stream of this fill the mall event back in 2016. Let me make sure we're connected. And we'll keep going with this. Good morning. Let's make sure we're live. Let's just let me know if we're live, you guys, and we'll continue on with this. All right. Okay, cool. Thanks, D Curb. Appreciate it. Fill the mall. Now, the reason why we're talking about this is because it's going to segue into the rest of the show. It's very important that we establish this history of what happened in 2016. Fill the mall. And basically, we did this three-hour stream and we covered this national Christian concert at the Crapper Hole Mall, the National Mall, the lawn. And... We identified this huge phallic shape in the advertisement here. This is an advertising um, trailer, I guess you can call it, to get people to show up to this event. Let me play this for you. So here's the deal. We have the deal. We so the obvious, obvious phallic imagery there. So, this was their advertising. I should have probably turned the sound off for you guys. I know that was a little bit weird. Let me uh, let me put it right at the correct speed so you can hear. There's even audio effects here that, that seem to suggest that there's some subliminals going on here, right? Let's play it back again. So here's the deal. We have them all, but the hashtag in freaking person. So here's the deal. We have them all, but the parks... So... This was crazy, right? So, for those of us that were watching that at the time, we saw that this was some kind of ritual. And I believe that this is when the whole modern unholy alliance between Christianity and the government was consummated. When Christianity officially sold out to the government on the crapper hole lawn, bowing to Satan in false worship below the Washington Memorial, which just so happened to be on that day as we were streaming live was struck by lightning or struck several times, actually. Now, this was an all day concert where the theme was come as you are. All are accepted. Now, that is definitely a theme that Jesus wants us to you know, talk about. In, in, and uh, accept when we accept him. But there's a part of that that is very important that they left out, which is repentance of your sins. Leave your sins behind. Accept him and try to live a better life. At least try to meet your sins head on and let him do the rest of the work to get you to stop doing those sins. He doesn't tell you come as you are and you'll just be accepted and continue on and give in to your sin. That's not how this works. Because then the, then the devil has you, doesn't he? Now, many of you will also remember there was a particular new virtual reality Pokemon app for phones. And this is where they launched this thing. And, of course, Pokemon's all about collecting demons, isn't it? So all these Christians were running around collecting the 72 demons of the Pokemon onto their app. So now you know why I say fill the mall really means fill them all and catch them all, which is the Pokemon tagline. Poke the man. Now here we are full circle. And with certainty, based on how the church handled this spam demic, looking in hindsight, we can now say beyond the shadow of a doubt that the agenda was very clear. It was like they knew what they were planning. And that brings us to the present. When only a few days ago we found another piece 
to the National Mall puzzle. A giant hypodermic needle. A syringe. So, this of course is the Capitol building. Uh, it's a little bit fuzzy. I should have found a better image for you guys. This is... Is that the White House or the Capitol? I always forget. I get the two confused. And there's their, the surrounding landscape there. And as you can see, it appears as a large syringe. Now, this mall here is where this concert took place. All throughout this central lawn area here is where this concert took place. And as you can see, this is the Washington Monument. The Needle. And this is always what it was about. Now, we did a full decode on this. If you're like going, Casey, that's a bit of a stretch. You need to go back to the decode we did on this discovery. Because it all pointed to the Lincoln Memorial. And the Lincoln presidency was the presidency under which the syringe was invented. The hollow tip syringe. We linked in Planet of the Apes and everything else with it as well in that decode. Now... So, what's this all really about? This giant hypodermic needle syringe. Well, we now know that this is probably synonymous with the phallic imagery that we just saw here. This is a part of the National Mall here. Let's rewind this a little bit so you guys can see this. There it is. And here is that central part. Here is the White House. And that's what this really is. This is also a syringe. It's a phallic going that way, and it's a syringe coming this way, just to give you your bearings. So the two are one and the same, aren't they? And that would make sense, wouldn't it? Something that changes something else by injecting something into it is what's really happening here. Now, it's interesting because Al Pacino, remember he played the devil? Atop Trump Tower 66 floor penthouse in The Devil's Advocate. Well, this was his first major role. The Panic in Needle Park. And he plays a heroin addict with this woman. And it tells a whole story. Now, I have not seen this film, but it's interesting, isn't it? All these connections of needles and syringes. And we found the other needle in Lower Manhattan, not far, just a few blocks away from Needle Park. So, weird times, right? Now, one of you guys found something else, and this is what we're going to get in today. This is the San Francisco needle. And... What forms the tip of the needle? Well, obviously, it's the Trans-American Pyramid. Gives you a little bit of a snapshot into what they're trying to do with these needles, doesn't it? And this one I found just this morning when you guys left a comment and said, Hey, Casey, go look at the Trans-America building. See if you see a needle in the landscape. And sure enough, there's a needle here, as you can see here. Now you can go into Google Earth and do this yourself. All I did was outline these buildings. And I connected that to the pyramid, and it forms a needle. Crazy. Here's the Transamerica building right here. I extended this out, so basically it would be if you topple over the building, it would form this exact shape. Now, let's go back to you guys. Make sure everybody's starting to come in here. Good. Okay, looks like our connection's good. Let's keep going with this, because there's even more. You guys found another one. You guys found all these. I didn't go searching around all the towers to see if I could find needles. You're like, Casey, check out Paris. So I looked at Paris. And look what I found. The Eiffel Tower is here. And it too forms the tip of a needle. See these, this arced building down here? We're going to get into that. It's actually a maritime museum. It was also at a World's Fair. We're going to break all that down today. But you could see that it forms the finger holders or whatever. That's probably not the correct terminology. But these finger grips here curve around in some types of syringes. 
right? And even this back part here kind of matches up with these two buildings. And you have the pusher or the plunger back here. Strange times, right? Now, this whole thing raises questions about the Eiffel Tower, doesn't it? Because the Eiffel Tower is alleged to be some kind of antenna. It's depicted that way in television and films. There was one film, I think, with Nikola Tesla in it. And they said that basically the Eiffel Tower was a secret antenna that sent out signals or received signals. I can't remember the exact plot or the exact film in which that appeared. But that's what, it's, that's what they said. And so I'm starting to wonder if this infers some kind of relationship between radio frequencies and whatever is in this syringe. Now, this curved building here was originally called the Palace de, de Trocadero. My French is really bad. But this was the original palace. The Tro Trocadero Palace. And it was built a few years after the invention of the hollow needle syringe. Right about the time... We were having our civil war here under Lincoln. This building was built. It was built specifically for the World's Fair. Here's some images of it. Let me zoom these up so you guys can see this. Trocadero Palace. Opposite this, right over here in this area, is the Eiffel Tower. that We just looked at in Google Earth. Let's go down here. Now, there's a strange story behind this palace. Because it was part of a very, very bizarre and weird world's fair. Here's the Palace de Trocadero. The curved building. And injecting into the Eiffel Tower, which is opposite the river. Here's some information on the Palace de Chalot, which is this whole complex, including the curved building, the Trocadero building. They made this hill. There's fountains, water, which suggests some kind of fluid going into us from the syringe, right? And this whole thing was a museum, a marine museum. It's all about the water. Now, when did this whole thing get developed? Well, it was developed during this World's Fair, as I told you. Trocadero, let's go to this part right here. And that's what we're going to focus on for the next few minutes here. The Exposition Universelle. 1878. Just a decade or two earlier, the hollow syringe was invented. It was used extensively in the Civil War to medicate the soldiers who had gotten injured and many of them became addicts. We read the history about that in a previous show. Half a million Civil War soldiers became addicts because of the hollow tip needle. We were never meant to inject things into our body because it goes directly into the bloodstream and the bloodstream is holy, isn't it? It is, the life is in the blood. The Bible says that many, many times. Let's read this here. The third Paris World's Fair called Exposition Universal in French was held from May 1st, which is, of course, the highest day of Illuminati sacrifice. It is their most deadly holiday, May 1st. And it celebrated the recovery of France after the Franco-Prussian War. They talk about the building, how it was constructed, and updated during this time. I'm going to show you that here. The Trocadero it, uh, of the Palace de Chalot is an area of Paris, France in the 16th arrondissement across the Seine from the Eiffel Tower. It is also the name of the 1878 palace which was demolished in 1937 to make way for the Palace de Chalot. So there's your history on this. 
Now let's go back to this World's Fair. Now this was, like I said, a very weird World's Fair. We had the May 1st, May Day start of the World's Fair. And part of this World's Fair was the head, the head of Apollo, the head of Sol Invictus, Lady Liberty, before it ever made it to America. This was on display, S-O-L, Sol Statue of Liberty. Now, weird thing is that this entire fair covered 66 acres. Which is, of course, Apollo's number. And commissioners included a guy named Pierce the Young. I mean, Pierce Young. He was a commissioner. He was also a U.S. congressman. Pierce B. Young. There was even a Simeon vase. As you can see here, of course, Simeon means monkey, doesn't it? Now, not in this context. Obviously, there's no monkeys on here. But you see where all this is headed. The Planet of the Apes, the polio, smack scene, and the whole thing. Now, the most troubling aspect of this whole thing was a human zoo. Who was in the human zoo? Africans. One popular feature, feature was a human zoo called an N-E-G-R-O village. Now I'm going to show you some images from that. But in hindsight, history has judged this as very, very insensitive and downright racist. Now, there was also Thomas Edison's megaphone or phonograph. And we know because of previous decodes that we've done that a phonograph is basically an umbrella and a needle, isn't it? And we saw that symbolism in a fringe episode, didn't we? In which there was a doctor that had a needle, which we know needles are umbrellas. And he used that to basically turn people into zombies, didn't he? And take their organs out of them in that Fringe episode. So, let's take a look at some of these other images here. Here's a vintage image of the alignment, the syringe, spiritually manifesting in the landscape. Here is the village of this zoo, the human zoo. People on display. Now, if you think I'm reading too much into this, remember that the Planet of the Apes had also a human zoo. Watch. She keep this. Bad place. Human zoo. Bad place. Human zoo. Bad human. Bad humans. Soldiers. They called the coming people a human zoo in Planet of the Apes. The same exact thing that happened at this World Fair. Where a giant hypodermic needle appears in the landscape. So there are obvious connections be between the apes and the needles, isn't there? Now, if you're still not convinced, this is Pogo. And he appeared in another series called the Umbrella Academy. And he was basically a self-aware chimpanzee. An advanced chimpanzee because of experiments that were done on him. In the series, the Umbrella Academy. And one of you reminded me that you had heard of Pogo before. Because Pogo is like a Pogo stick, which visually resembles 
a hypodermic needle. This is why I tell you guys, you are amazing. Because you guys are the ones that find all this stuff. Sometimes it's hard for me to even keep up with your discoveries that, I'm, that I present to everyone. So everyone can have their eyes opened. Now... All of this brings us to something else that you probably remember. When Britney Spears shaved her head and flipped out and pulled an umbrella out to break the window of paparazzi's car. Now, what makes this weird is that later, she basically, let's take a look at some of these images here so we can remember what happened. This was way back in like 2007, I want to say. And like I said, I rarely kind of follow these celebrities but unless it relates directly to the Matrix. But many of you remember she shaved her head. This is when she was with Federline. And then she went on some kind of rampage and started breaking windows with an umbrella. Well, get this. She later admitted that this was a role that she was playing and preparing a character for. Let's read this. A few months later, in July 2007, Brittany apologized on her website, apologized to the pop for a stunt that was done four months ago regarding an umbrella. I was preparing my character for a role in a movie where the husband never plays his part, so they switch places accidentally. Wow. Switching roles. Switching characters. Switching roles. Are you starting to see what's happening here? This is what the umbrella or the needle is going to do. It's going to cause roles to switch. She then goes on. I take all my roles very seriously. And I got a little carried away. Unfortunately, I didn't get the part. So now we got to look back and find this movie that she was gonna that she was trying to play a role in in 2007. And we'll do that after the show. I'm not gonna do it here live, but I'm gonna find this movie because this is probably gonna tell us everything we need to know about all of this. So now we have baldness, we have umbrellas, all of the things that we're just now discovering in this matrix. We have all of the components of it, complete, full circle. Now, as we had discussed in previous shows, we discovered also that ancient Roman mythology says that the goddess Artemis was found under a willow tree with a god named Alapicus which is where the word alopecia probably came from, which means baldness. We also found that willow trees represent hair. Well, look at this. Brand new movie being filmed right now. Scarlett Johansson, Chris Evans, and it's going to be directed by Bateman. The film's called Project Artemis. Now, there's not much about this film out there. They are saying that it is going to be based on the space program and going back to the moon. Listen. That is being kept tightly under wraps. We got a bit of information. We heard it's created against the space race. The film is taking influence from NASA's Project Artemis. It is NASA's Project Artemis. So this will be a project to watch. What they're going to do to make us believe that they are going back to the moon. So, I kept following the rabbit hole trail. And that triggered me to screen the film Artemis Fowl. Many of you had asked me to screen this in the past, and I put it off, and I put it off. And finally, I watched it. Now, there wasn't much in this film about syringes, or baldness, or monkeys. There was none of that symbolism in there. But let me tell you what there was symbolism of in this film. It was loaded with symbolism about earth portals to hell and the middle earth, the hollow earth. Now, as you're going to see in these clips, 
These portals include column basalt tree stumps and volcanoes and trees. So let me give you the backdrop of Artemis Fowl before we get into this. Artemis is a boy and he's really smart. In fact, they make him smarter than all the adults in the film, even smarter than his father. His father is played by Colin Farrell. Who is, what does Colin Farrell's name mean? The Farrell is the tip of the umbrella. In fact, Colin Farrell also played another umbrella man. He played a bald penguin in one of the Batman movies. So, in Artemis Fowl, he ends up getting kidnapped by an entity from the fairy realm. This is all about fairies and dwarves and all this stuff. And they all live in the Middle Earth, the Hollow Earth. And this entity that kidnaps Artemis Fowl Sr., Colin Farrell, the Umbrella Man, the entity basically wants this object called the Aculos. The Aculos has magical powers. That could spell the end of civilization if it were in the wrong hands. So, this entity makes a deal with Artemis Jr., which is the little Artemis. And she says, hey, if you go find this Oculus and bring it back, I'll let your dad go. So, in this film, the fairies of the underworld, Hollow Earth, also want the acorn Oculus as well for themselves because that's where who the rightful owners are of this thing and they basically descend on foul manner to retrieve the aculos and this is where we get into portals because the film suggests several mechanisms of travel to portal from the underworld to the surface like i said trees volcanoes and column basalt tree stumps let's watch this because their world it's too well hidden you see the standing stones? In my father's journal, he wrote of a fairy who would periodically visit the oak tree on the hill of Tara. Fair world, it's too... These standing stones here. We were just talking about this, weren't we? We were just talking about these standing stones as portals, weren't we? We did the whole Outlander series and the stones of Kalanish just 77 degrees away from where Thump's mother was born in Scotland. And here they are depicted once again as portals in this film. Let's keep watching here. Well hidden. In my father's See the tree here and the acorn? Now the fairies live down here. And their portal is the acorn. Well they have other ways of getting up to the surface, but here it's depicted as the acorn down here. In the root system of the tree coming up. What you're going to see next is column basalt. Again, something we had identified years ago as portals to the underworld. Now, when I began to do these decodes on these column basalt structures, and I realized that they were portal tree stumps, I got a lot of pushback from naysayers. I had people telling me, Casey, the, the work you do on this column basalt, you know, being tree stumps, it really negates the rest of your work because it's so ridiculous and you should just stop talking about it. This is what I was told by a lot of people. And I said, you don't understand. This is a spiritual revelation. And though I don't know anything for sure, I could tell you this. When you have packed columnar basalt in perfectly packed hexagonal matrices, that's not a natural phenomenon. I don't care what you tell me. That's not created by lava and magma coming out of the ground, especially when they're in the perfect uh, shape of a tree stump. And at the very least, let's say they were created by the magma. Well, what's to say that the volcano is still not a tree stump? What's to say it isn't? It could be, but its sap is not sap at all. It's molten rock. And so you got to think outside the box, and this is where the nested reality helps us understand things. Because things are very similar to other things. There is very little in nature that is just a standalone shape or an object or discovery. Everything looks like something else. It's called the nested reality. And once you begin to understand that, you can solve some of these mysteries with the help of the Holy Spirit.
journal, he wrote of a fairy who would periodically visit the oak tree on the hill of Tara. We have a problem. Here's the column basalt behind this guy. He's basically the technician that allows people to travel through the portals. He's the gatekeeper. And in behind him, spinning around him, are is the column basalt complexes. One of ours is unaccounted for on the surface. Here you see it over here on this side. Could be a deep tunnel breakout. Perhaps through a... Here you see it there. Vault or dormant volcano. Send someone up to identify it. Through a vault or a dormant volcano. This is how they travel. This is why you see UFOs and demonic spirits and lightning striking these places. Because there's spiritual activity going on. Perhaps through a vault or dormant volcano. Send someone up to identify it. One of ours is unaccounted for on the surface. Elf, dwarf, goblin. Hard to tell, but it's big. Now, so this is why you see these column basalt complexes appearing regularly in these films. Nested in themes about interdimensional travel and portals. Remember Gulliver's Travels we decoded with Jack Black? And there was a columnar basalt complex. Remember the, um, the series Raised by Wolves? And there was a columnar basalt complex where Sol Invictus was? Are you starting to see what's happening here? Now, the only reason why we recognize all this stuff is because we're watching it and putting it all together. Most people, this goes right over their heads. They don't see the patterns. They don't see the forest from the trees, pun intended. But we do, because we're looking at it and because we care about the spiritual realm. We care about exposing evil. Now, in this scene, one of the fairies gets into a magma portal to come up through a volcano to the surface. This is the quickest way we can take you to the surface, so pay attention. You'll be sitting on 200,000 tons of molten lava, traveling at over 600 miles an hour. Uh, now remember, they're going to the surface to try to retrieve the aculos. The acorn, and this is what it looks like. Wow, right? Most powerful treasure in the fairy world. So there it is. That's the Aculos, the acorn of a tree. It's all about interdimensional travel. So this is what I basically had for you guys in terms of Artemis Fowl. This was like one of the lamest movies I ever watched. It was a very poorly written superhero movie. And again, it kind of irritated me because here you have children smarter than adults and ruling the world. And that to me is blasphemy. Okay. Now, unless you want to bore yourself into a coma, I would not recommend watching this film. There's not even really much else to decode about it other than what I just showed you. And as you can see, we just took care of it in a one minute and 24 second Montage. Step back, Mr. Diggums. It's real. It's perfect. The Oculus. So, that's Artemis Fowl, and it was a foul movie, just to let you know. All right, let's go back here in the chat and talk about what's going to happen tomorrow. Now, tomorrow, let me zoom you guys up here so I can see what's going on. Uh, tomorrow, I think we might meet right back here again at the same exact time, and we're going to screen the Omega Man decode that we did. We're going to do that tomorrow instead of Saturday. So if you were planning on watching on Saturday, let's just show up tomorrow and we'll do it that instead, because I want to see that because it, it basically dovetails into exactly what's happening right now. It's all about Apollo, the Alpha and the Omega it's about viruses, it's about spamdemics, it's about zombie apocalypse, it's everything that's happening right now. So we need to get that rescreened because I I think we decoded that last year or the year before. But we're gonna re-upload it. And also another reason why I want to get that uh, uploaded tomorrow is because Will Smith is emerging as a celebrity to watch, is he not? And going into 2023 into the I Am Legend 2 sequel. 
Let me show that to you. Because the smite or <laughs> the smite, despite smacking Chris Rock in front of the nation, smacking the nation, despite all that, he has not been canceled yet from I Am Legend 2, according to everything that I found on the internet. In fact, they're now trying to make a drama out of it. They're like, how is he supposed to play this benevolent doctor who loves the world when he just slapped Chris Rock? Well, they're going to use that drama to, to get everybody to watch this film. And they're saying, oh, this film isn't going to do well because, because of what happened. Trust me, the world will be watching this film despite what happened with the Oscars. Okay, so... Um, all of that we're going to cover tomorrow uh, in this. It's going to be a premiere. So I'll be with you guys here in the chat for the whole thing, the whole duration of it, which will be cool. And I'll be able to answer questions you might have in real time. If you have questions about the film, like you get, you're get you getting confused about it or whatever, um, or what I'm trying to show you or share, just let me know and we can have a discussion about that. Let's go into the chat for a little bit see what you guys are up to. We'll do a little Q&A. Gal Gotha says, Oh wow, Mega Man was my favorite film in the 70s with Charlton Heston. Yes, it's all about convalescent plasma, which has happened in real life. Uh, Charlton Heston gives his blood to cure the zombie apocalypse, but they end up draining him dry. And in the last scene of the film, he's laying in a fountain of water in the crucifixion position as if he was crucified, giving his blood to cure the world instead of relying on jesus blood to cure us isn't that interesting so we break all that down tomorrow it's one of my favorite decodes ever and i hope that you guys show up for that all right good morning michael Sake of all those demon infested actors. Yeah, you know, we cover these actors because they are the Pied Pipers of this reality, aren't they? Everybody's watching them. They've got millions and millions of subscribers and people who basically fashion their entire lives through their fashion and through the way they act. So this is the front. This is the battlefront where we need to fight this because they are the ones influencing the world. So we counter influence, don't we, with the truth and how people are being manipulated and taken down a path. And that's why this, you know, I don't, I don't, this is dirty work, you guys. I sit and watch this stuff every single day to break down this matrix so you can understand how you're being gaslighted and manipulated. But for some reason, God has given me a thick skin with this stuff to decode it, present it, but not let it get to me. But I'm human and sometimes it is too much. Sometimes I'm like, God, when are you going to come back so we can be done with this? I'm exhausted. And I'm exhausted not because the work is that hard, but because of the trolling, because of the naysayers, because of the people in denial. When you can show them something straight to their face, or show them a repeating pattern straight to their face, and they'll still deny the truth. They still want to live in their sin, whatever that sin may be. They still want to trust these people. They still want to be beholden to governments. They still want to love the world. And that's the exhausting part because you know, you know, every day I wake up, I honestly think to myself, wow, God, maybe today is the day where one of our videos is seen by a million people. Maybe today is the day where we can wake up hundreds of thousands of people instead of just one or two people per show. Maybe today is the day that maybe that gate won't be so narrow. Maybe the gate can get widened just a little bit to let more people in but then as the days go on i realize that that's not what's going to happen because bible prophecy says the gate is narrow but i take this very seriously that if we can just wake up more people maybe it will catch fire maybe more people will wake up to this madness and stop playing in the devil's land but then it doesn't happen day after day so it is what it is um we'll see what happens we'll see what happens you guys yeah i always think that too maybe today is the day we get to go home eyes up sometimes i think the same way 
You can't stop prophecy, Yabba Dabba. You're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. And Rachel says it's a narrow path. You're absolutely right. But, like, are we supposed to stop trying? That's the thing I battle with. When are we supposed to stop trying? All right. What else do we have here? Thanks for all the encouragement, you guys. You guys are the most encouraging group of, sub of subscribers on YouTube, I believe. Okay. The needle at the top left of the screen looks like an upside down umbrella. Yeah, and you're going to see that. You're going to see the umbrella and the needle dovetailing, dovetailing in together, looking the same. Because they're, they are one in the same. They're one in the same. Now, something weird. I was looking at the top of Thump Tower. I've done some decodes on that. Thump Tower is a 666 uh, par uh, what do they call it? Pyramid. Numerically. Let's look that up. 666 numerical pyramid. Let's see if it comes up here. So visually, you can actually take the number 666 and all the numbers that add up to 666 and it forms a pyramid. Um, numbers. Let's put number. Where is it? Do you guys remember this graphic that we talked about? Um, let's see here. It's not going to show us here. Wish I could find that. But basically, you, you can stack these numbers up and they look like a pyramid. And that's what the 666 number is visually representative of. But it's got an edge to it, which looks like bat wings, which looks like thump tower. Maybe we'll call it something else. Number tree. No. Hmm. Triangle. Let's try that. There it is. Okay. Very good. I wanted to show you that. So this is the devil's triangular number. As you can see. All they did was take all the numbers that add up to 666 and they put them in this pyramid. This is exactly how it visually looks. Well, this is the same shape that Thump Tower is. There's less of these steps in it. I think there's only seven steps in his, but it's the same concept. Now you know why it was the Devil's Advocate was filmed there and the Dark Knight, the Batman movie. Because it's always been about that from the beginning. Now we did a full video on this. The Devil's Triangular Number and Thump Tower and all that. Again, a lot of people love men out there. And so they were very offended that I would uncover this kind of, you know, occult meaning in his Thump Tower architectural design. I even had people telling me, well, he didn't build it. An architect came up with the design. So a lot of people in denial. And that's what saddens me because, you know, until you wake up to this stuff... You're always going to be deceived. Um, just want to do a quick side by side for you guys. So you can visually see what I'm trying to show you here with this triangular number. Now you'll notice, where did it go? Let's find it here. Oh, here it is. So, there you see the similarities between the triangular number, 666 number. Now, you can't just take any number and do this triangular pyramid with this. It has to be 666. It can't be 527. It can't be 422. It has to be 666. And there you see, it's visually similar to the Thump Tower. Now, this also looks kind of like... An umbrella, doesn't it? Stick a stick right through the middle there and you have an umbrella. Albeit a triangular umbrella, but still the basic shape of an umbrella. So now we're starting to see the bigger picture here. 
that the penguin in his umbrella in sub-zero temperatures, the bald penguin, really he's holding a syringe, isn't he? Yes, he is. A bat syringe. So really, the penguin is one in the same with Batman, isn't he? And we know that Batman is Thump. They're one in the same. They always have been. We just didn't see it until now. Now, much of this stuff is manifesting on a spiritual level. And I don't still don't know exactly how all this works. I don't know if it's God revealing their sin through their own manifestation of the Matrix, through choices and decisions that they've made in this Matrix. I don't know if they are intentionally coming up with these symbols to hide in plain sight. I don't know any of that because I'm not God and I'm not anything close. I, What we're doing here is imagine an outfielder and you've got God or Jesus hitting balls out into the outfield hundreds per second and we just just so happen to catch two or three of them and we're trying to catch all the balls we can and so that we can identify who who the batter is who's up to bat and exactly how all this works but we're not getting the full picture we're catching as many balls as we can to try to put these puzzle pieces together and that's this journey that we've been on it's the best way i could describe it so but I don't know about you guys, but I think this is great. Some, some people get frustrated with this process. This is a process, and this is why we show up here every day, because every day we put another piece of the puzzle, don't we? It's a process, and I enjoy the process because I enjoy seeking the truth. And I'll never really get tired of it. I get frustrated sometimes, but I hope you feel the same way. Some people say, oh, when's this ever going to end? Well, it ends when Jesus comes back. That's when it's going to end. And we have to do the best we can to understand all this stuff so that we can warn people. Right? Route 66. Yeah, I'm sure there's something to that as well. Apollo. All right, you guys. I'm going to go ahead and let you go. I will see you tomorrow in the chat. I love you guys and have a great day. Take care and be safe.